Now most of us have our money on the US stock market, but what about Europe? Hello there, welcome to another video on investing in stocks. If you enjoy it, hit subscribe. Now, before I begin the video, it's your last chance to grab one of these t-shirts, link is in the description. And today we're talking about Europe. Yep, that's a place, that's a thing across the pond from the US. Now, you know, you shouldn't have all your money in one basket, right? You shouldn't have all your money in healthcare stocks. You shouldn't have all your money in banking stocks. You shouldn't have all your money in dividend stocks, high risk, low risk. You want to spread it out a little bit. And likewise, you don't want to have all your money in the US or all your money in Europe. And since most of the public companies and most of the market cap is in the US, people, myself included, tend to just look at the US. But there are a lot of interesting opportunities in Europe. There's, there's massive stock exchanges, big, big companies, and it's very different from the US stock market. Now, keep in mind, most uh, the, the global stock market tends to follow the US. So if the US stock market goes down, so does the European. But there is some differences. And in Europe, uh, you generally get more growth, more risk, and most importantly, way more dividend. Europe is the destination for dividend. That's going to be the focus of, focus of today's video. So looking at the largest economies in Europe, because Europe is consisting you know, of many different countries and these countries are very different. While in the US, it's pretty much under one roof. So here we have Germany, 3.5 trillion. Now to put this in perspective, I do believe the United States has around $18 trillion uh, annual economy. So Germany has 3.5. UK 2.6 and then France 2.5. Germany is a massive country, great economy, some very good companies. And the European as a total, so that's not Europe, just the European Union, has about 16 trillion nominal GDP. That's almost the same as the US, but there's way more, there's way more people uh, in the EU. 2.6% average annual growth rate. It's about 0.5, at least 0.6% higher than uh, the US. And, but you know, a lot of the high GDP growth countries are smaller uh, developing, uh, emerging countries. So uh, countries like Germany and UK does pull that average down a little bit. So realistically, you can find a lot more GDP growth than just 2.6%, but that's the average. So, but it's still way high. Well, it's still higher than the US. And Europe is all about dividend. Don't ask me why, but European uh, companies just tend to pay out way more dividend. Now, a dividend can be a way to attract investors to your company. You know, the US has all the big, well known companies, but Europe might have to pay some more dividend to get investors to take a look at them. So you have like Nestle, uh, which is a German uh, food maker, uh, food company, BMW, look at this, 2.86%, 3.73%, Novo Nordisk, which is a Danish pharmaceutical company, 3.72%, Santander, which is the Spanish banker, I believe, 3.52%, Bayer, German uh, pharmaceutical um, biotech company, 2.54. Like you can't even get below 2%. Uh, Royal Dutch, which is the massive old company, 5.74% dividend every single year. Siemens, German technology company, 3.04. UBS, British bank, uh, 3.36. And among these and Europe in general, I have some personal stocks that I'm sort of watching. I don't own these stocks, but they are some of the more interesting picks in my opinion. So we have Louis Vuitton, which is a uh, obviously a fa um, luxury clothing brand, 2% uh, dividend from a clothing company. ABB, which is a Swiss uh, robot manufacturer, also a part of the BOTS ETF. BMW, as mentioned, we all know BMW. Novo Nordisk, which is the Danish uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh, Europe is very big on pharmaceuticals and healthcare. And keep in mind, there are way more people in Europe 
than in the US. And so although the, the US companies does um, compete with the healthcare companies in Europe, these like Bayer and Novo Nordisk and Novartis AG, you know, they pretty much have the European market locked down and there are, how many is there, like six, seven hundred million people in Europe at least. Um, then we have Bayer, which is a German uh, pharmaceutical company. SAP, which is a bull, let me, it's a German technology company, it's like a cloud thing. I think it's German. And then we have a, I can't remember what it's called, but it's RSW. And it's also a part of the uh, ro uh, the bots ETF, so the robotics and automation, artificial intelligence ETF. So this is like a, a Internet of Things and automation company. No dividend there. And then for ETFs, there's not a lot to choose from. It's not like in the US where you have 100 S&P 500 uh, ETFs, 1000 NASDAQ, 20 Dow Jones. Uh, ETF. So for Europe, you don't have too much to choose from. My uh, recommendations will definitely be the Vanguard one, 2.53. Then you have Fez, 2.27. Uh, iShares Europe, I guess, 2.5%. Uh, and then for small caps, so that's going to be European uh, small caps, a lot of potential for growth, but obviously a lot of risk. The uh, iShares European small cap, 2%. And then uh, this is, I bet, I think it's Wisdom Tree or something, 2.37% uh, dividend. So very high dividend, a, a little bit higher than the S&P P average. I think the S&P is about uh, slightly below 2%, while in Europe the average is uh, maybe about 2.5%, so a lot of dividend. Uh, emerging Europe, now there's pretty much no broad emerging Europe ETFs. Um, but it's mostly Eastern Europe, which is the emerging part. So here we have the Russia ETF, 3.86% uh, dividend, a lot of risk going into Russia, a lot of like mining companies, oil companies, uranium companies, all sorts of shady stuff. Uh, the Polish ETF, 1.7, and then the Turkish ETF, 2.5%. And as you might have guessed, you know, these companies are a little bit smaller than their uh, US counterparts and uh, Europe, Europe is a little bit more unstable than the US because the US is just one country with one, one uh, you know, president, one government, one federal bank. Europe is a little bit more fractured, a little bit more split. Um, it's sort of controlled by Germany and the UK and France, and then the smaller countries sort of has their niche their markets that they're very big in. But in general, it's more growth, more risk, but also more dividends. So have a look at Europe. Uh, good luck.